got a 2010 Ford Ranger. Customer complaint is that the check engine light is on and he's not getting no power at all. So let's see if we can diagnose it for this customer and let's get into it. I was test running this vehicle because the customer just dropped it off and he said the check engine light was on but for some reason it tends to flash on and off and the vehicle is losing power. He's struggling to go over 60 um, kilometers right power and we got 143,000 on the dash and he's not sure exactly what's going on. So I'd like to take this back to the shop, put the scan tool on it and see if we could diagnose it for this customer and see you know if we can get some sort of direction yeah so let's get back to the shop so let's scan this vehicle and see exactly what's going on right as i said it's feeling like this vehicle is definitely holding back and there you have it we have a p0107 ff map sensor biometric low input circuit problem and we got a p2227 biometric circuit range performance so yep when we have a problem with the map sensor, that definitely can hold the vehicle back and cause it not to boost properly because it's a sensor that's reading on the intake manifold, right? And if it's not reading the proper vacuum, it's not going to do its thing. Okay, um, let's go into enter, go retrieve. Okay, so we do have a P0107FF code that's come out there. I got to make a report. But I just want to see exactly what's going on with my map sensor at idle. I like to see the voltage as well. Let's see if the voltage is circuit high, circuit low, intake. I'm going to look at my engine load as well. If your map sensor have a fault, it could cause you to burn fuel or also, you know, reduce fuel and cause the engine to be acting up. So let's graph all this. All oh, right, I'm 20 kPa, which can't be. All right, let's start the vehicle. Up. And my biometric is at 100, and my map sensor is staying at 20. It's not moving at all. So I do. I definitely got a no input. It's not moving at all. Let's step on the X. Nothing. No response. So it's stuck. So with the change of the vacuum, I'm supposed to see the change in resistance on this map sensor and I'm not seeing anything at all. So we could take the math off. Let's take the math off and the intake. And let's graph this again. Nothing. So yep, we definitely look like we have a faulty map sensor. Our map sensor is not moving at all. Check engine light is still on. So let's go in the hood and let's take a look and see exactly where the map sensor is located. And I mean, I ran into this problem too many times. It's definitely the map sensor, but I've got to do my checks first. So let's go in the hood and see what's good. All right, so if you come to the right side of the engine, you see that this is the map sensor right here. It's a four wire type. Okay, we just got to ensure that we gain voltage coming out of this wire. If I unplug this, supposed to see circuit high 5 volts if I'm not getting 5 volts at all just let me know that we have a problem with the circuit somehow right it's a 4 pin I'm expecting to see 5 volts um what's that voltage ref basically letting you know that is a ground you also have an IAT sensor on this as well which is the intake air temperature sensor and also supposed to have the signal wire all right so a quick test you can do you can just unplug it right and once you unplug it you could go and you scan the vehicle and see if you see any circuit high code that's one way to check or if you want you can put the key on engine off and you could come with your multimeter and you can check your pins and see if you're getting voltage and if you gain everything that you need to get off the sensor, well, we got a well, the harness. That means we have a faulty sensor. One hour later. Okay, so I just got back from the shop. I got the new part. This is our original Bosch, right? Map sensor. 
Uh, if you want the part number, there it is. Okay, so we're going to have to remove this shield right here. I always recommend that you remove the shield and don't try to shortcut this job because too many times I saw guys break this sensor. It's just the O-ring tends to hold it, but because the carbon buildup, it, you know, tends to hold a piece of the O-ring and it breaks in the hole, right? And also for this vehicle, it, it also have a lot of carbon buildup in the intake for the ones I did in the past. So, I mean, it's fairly easy. Okay. All right, so it's fairly easy to get to. You just gotta take your time. I'm just gonna remove the ground. The key is off, so we don't have to worry about anything. I'm just gonna remove the ground and this plate. And with that, now I'm supposed to be able to get the sense out. It's just gonna be held in with a 10 millimeter. And you just gotta take this off right now. All right, it's nothing fancy. Just leave it to the side like this right good you can leave it right there so I'm gonna use this 10 bucket I'm just gonna take it off try to try to get your hands on the original because I have used aftermarket map sensor in the past and it didn't work at all all right and I'm gonna show you our next trick real quick all right, so you just don't yank on that sensor. It's going to break. So get some WD-40 and just spray it in. And let's see if the WD-40 can loosen the carbon and the O-ring before you pull it because it's going to break. Always go with the original, man. Don't go with the aftermarket. You're definitely going to get burnt. So this is the O-ring that tends to stick in the hole because of the carbon buildup. And so what we're going to do next is just spray some wd right here and you just try to get right under the sensor as best as you can and you're not just going to yank on it you're just going to turn it side to side like this until you get it to free up please don't yank on it it's gonna you're gonna get burned so you just turn it a little bit and spray again and that's all you're gonna do just keep going side to side rocking it okay once that is done you're gonna get a pick like this and you're just gonna just slowly get under it and you're gonna try to raise it while you're rocking it from side to side now if it breaks I mean you can't do nothing about that but I mean just try your best not to just give it a little tug and turn it side to side like that because you want to get under the o-ring so what I tend to do as well is get a position screwdriver and get close to the sensor as possible. And I'm just gonna give it a little pry up. But there you have it. It broke. It always breaks. You can't do nothing about that. So now I gotta get a hook to extract that. So let me show you another trick that I have up my sleeve. So what I do is use a drywall screw. Screw it in to the plastic. And once you get a good tug, it's supposed to pop out. So you just take it and you just rock it back and forth. And it's supposed to extract like this. There you have it. It's out. Right. So that's the piece that tends to stick. And as you can tell, it has some carbon. I mean, the WD-40 did what it could. But it's still, you know, was stuck. So let's clean that hole out. Make sure that, you know, we don't have any carbon buildup. Because it tends to build up a lot in this intake manifold. Okay, what you gotta do is just clean off the hole a little bit. You know, nothing major. You can't clean all the carbon out. So once that is out, you can install the, the sensor. Okay, so let me show you what the sensor look like. Again, this is the original sensor that I got my hands on. Try your best to get the original one and not the aftermarket because it will have you burning a lot of gas. Trust me, I know. Right, so that's the sensor. 
you just take your time you don't gotta put no grease or nothing like that because it's not coming back out you just rest it down put the the bolt back on and once you pull the bolt back on you don't have to over tighten it because it is plastic and you just plug it back in and let's clear the codes and let's take it for a spin and see if that's it okay so we just replaced the map sensor so i'm going to clear the codes and i basically had to you know clear all the adaptive values that was on this vehicle so let's do a smart detection i'm going to go and do a full scan all over you know ensure everything is good i did make a report so the customer is aware that we had some fault codes right i did have things unplugged so that's why you saw the intake air temperature circuit high as well was on so we're going to press enter so we're going to go into powertrain so if you can recall we had the map sensor was stuck on 20 kilopascal and the voltage was 0 0.11 once we had it unplugged it went up to 5 volts and we also had you know the fault on the IAT because of four wire sensor as well so we're going to pick the same pits that we had earlier no need to look at calculated load I want to go for my IAT my map I'm going to press OK I'm going to graph this so my biometric is 3.9 that hasn't changed 100 plus kPa my IAT at 0 0.8 volts when it was like 1.2 my manifold is at 99 kilopascals which changed and my voltage is 1.6 so we saw a difference in the pressure and the voltage so the pressure is related to temperature and also voltage right so that's letting us know that when temperature increase the pressure also increase okay so we're gonna start the vehicle matter of fact we gotta clear this code so we're gonna clear all the fault codes we're gonna go into special function all right so what we gotta do here now is we gotta reset some data no, we didn't do anything to the math, but I'm just going to play it anyway. You know, off. All right. Start it. Press OK. Wait for 30 seconds. You got to check engine light is off. For Ford Rangers and Mazda BT50 and stuff like that, you definitely got to do the relearn. And that's going to hold the values. I'm going to put the AC on because it's hot right now. I'm not sure if I was supposed to put the load on. All right, ignition off. Press OK. Ignition on. Press OK. Ignition off. Press OK. Yeah, so that's that. All right, we don't need to do anything else, do we? Okay, the reset. What is this? Let's see. Press OK. No, that's that's what we did earlier. Um. Yeah, I believe that's it. Normally, like in Ford, you have a list of stuff you have to re reset, but let's come out of there. Let's read four codes. Let's retrieve it. No DTC, which is good. So, let's start the vehicle up. And let's take it for a run and see exactly what's going on. I'm just going to leave the data up so you can take a look at it while I'm driving. Okay, I'm gonna also pick the engine load. Let's graph this. So right now my manifold pressure is at 98. It's close to the barometric pressure, which is ideal, right? This is a diesel engine, so the throttle body is um, plate is open. My engine load is at 23. If I put the AC on, I'm expecting to see it increase. Right, it increased to 30. Right, my manifold pressure voltage also changed and my map and math my math increased because I'm pulling more air in because I'm adding more load right so once I switch it off you see my engine load decrease and my math also decrease if I step on my X 
see my map also is boosting. So let's take it for a spin and let's see if we solve the problem. So right now I'm gonna call this a fix. We don't have any check engine light on and the vehicle is going over 40. Before I wasn't able to go nowhere, right? So that's letting me know that all is well. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment down in the box, hit that bell notification for more content by DJ Mobile Auto Services. And yeah, that's what's up. Share, like, comment, you know what it is. Until next time, y'all take it easy. Peace.